fading It seems all hell is coming knocking at my door I'm gonna sleep with the one I open Cause it seems clear you don't come around here no more And Lord I played the hand you dealt me Lord, I played till my gambling days were done. My enemies are gonna feel my heartache blazing down the barrel of my gun. Nails in the churches, nails in the dust, nails in the car. Peace we may rust One by one Whoa, One by one Burning down the barrel of my gun mm -hmm. Now my heart like roses on the graves Buried like each sorry fool Standing in my way I'm held in chains of darkness There's only ashes in my bowl I'll save a bullet for the devil When he comes to take my soul Nails in the churches Hi everyone and welcome to the 10th anniversary of Into the Dead. We are thrilled and humbled to be celebrating 10 years of this beloved franchise and we're so happy to be able to finally share some of the exciting things that we've been working on. So as most of you know, we have three weeks of celebrations covering the past, the present and the future. That's three weeks of announcements, three weeks of content and three weeks of live streams. If you want to keep up to date with all of the information and timings, make sure you check out our Facebook page which has all of the information there. Now quickly, I just want to do a little shout out to our in-house audio team, especially Brogan and Jason, who you heard performing live just now. How incredible were they? We've got a few more live performances coming your way and we hope you'll enjoy them. Also, just a quick reminder, we do have a t-shirt giveaway that we're running at the moment. We've got 10 limited edition anniversary t-shirts to give away. Now these won't be available for public sale, so you do have to be in the competition to win them. But all you have to do is be active in one of the stream chats and you'll be in to win. Right now, back to it. This week we are celebrating the past of the franchise and we're joined now by our CEO, Mario, to look back at our humble beginnings and the game that started it all. So my very first memory of Into the Dead was really uh, thinking about a concept for uh, a new game. And 
Uh, I had some spare time over a Christmas and had been playing a lot of a game called Dead Runner and a lot of a game called uh, Zombie Highway. And there were great things about both of those games. And I thought, hey, maybe there's something uh, we could do at Pickpot uh, that kind of blends these two concepts, these two game systems together. Uh, but a couple of months after having done that, uh, I was approached by Stuart Middleton, our creative director, and he had uh, a few artists that had kind of nothing to do uh, for a short space of time and wanted a project. And uh, we pulled together uh, these artists and gave them this concept for this uh, kind of zombie endless runner game, and uh, away they went. And what was sort of almost a training exercise uh, was really the start of development on the Into the Dead franchise. The, the idea really was to try and um, take uh, the first person shooter sort of immersive feel, uh, you know, the excitement that that sort of game provides in a different context on console, on PC, and trying to boil that down to a mobile experience. And uh, so it was really important for us to have great visuals, to have immersive sound, um, uh, for it to feel real and tangible. So we spent a lot of time getting the most rich visuals we could uh, on mobile and uh, you know, somehow distilling down a first-person shooter experience uh, into a mobile format. So in terms of what we learned from the original Into the Dead that uh, you know, we kind of wanted to, to build on and, and go into Into the Dead 2, um, you know, we, we, we had a great game and although there was a great premise in terms of run as long as you can, survive as long as you can, um, you know, there, there wasn't really anything you were working towards. And that was really the big change for us in going from the original Into the Dead to Into the Dead 2 was how can we create more depth? How can we create more longevity? Um, and that's kind of expressed in a combination of things in terms of changing up uh, to a, a level-based format, having that whole narrative arc that had some really high stakes across it, as well as uh, you know, having a much deeper a uh, system around collecting weapons, leveling up weapons, switching between weapons and being more strategic there. So, um, you know, it, it was really great to be able to start with that solid core foundation that Into the Dead 2 gave us and then just uh, push ahead on all these different levels. So one of the problems with mobile games is that uh, you know, they don't necessarily have a long shelf life. Uh, you know, there are there are games that we've made that we put out that uh, that you can't even find and, and play anymore, uh, and that's true from a lot of developers, a lot of publishers. Um, I don't think when we created this game, we, when we started working on this game, that. Uh, we thought it would have the legs where we would be sitting here talking about it uh, 10 years later. Um, and uh, maybe at the time we thought it was just a one-off game that we'll put out there and see how it does. Um, so it, it's kind of humbling and amazing to, to think in, in a, a gaming platform which is so ephemeral where you see games come and go that uh, we still have people downloading, playing the original. Uh, we have so many people uh, playing the sequel uh, and excited to talk about where uh, the, the franchise is going in the future. Um, so, you know, we definitely didn't expect the success, but uh, we're, we're glad that we've had it. We're glad so many people have been part of it and helping us uh, get here and uh, you know, we're looking ahead to the next 10 years. This week we released an updated version of the original Into the Dead, complete with remastered assets which is available to play now. Make sure you check it out and relive some of that classic nostalgia. We're joined now by Rob and Mark, two of our Into the Dead developers who've been there since the dawn of the first game. 
think my first memory of the project was seeing a, a very early prototype of it and noticing just how incredibly different it seemed from most of the stuff we were making at the time, which was a lot more bright, colourful, cartoonish, light-hearted stuff. And here was this first-person zombie shooter with very realistic, very graphic, incredibly serious. The tonal shift from everything else we were doing at the time was what really stood out. I guess it was it was the first time we had done anything sort of weapon or gun related. So that was that was interesting. That was sort of figuring out exactly what we had to do to take a, a model of you know players' arms and the different guns, handguns, rifles, etc., and how they would be rigged. Um, you know how the different joints would work and the controls. Uh, to work from a first-person point of view. Another thing that was interesting uh, about the rigging um, into the Dead One was uh, just really putting a lot of thought into how many joints each individual zombie could have just from a uh, performance point of view. Um, I do remember having discussions and, and really thinking about the absolute minimum we could put in there to um, keep it performant. I think the most important thing we learned from Into the Dead One was that you've got your two gameplay sides of dodging and shooting, and there wasn't necessarily all that much more we could do with the dodging, but there was a huge amount more we could add to the shooting side, so the breadth and depth of the weapon system was hugely expanded for the sequel, with you know both greater variety of weapons, of effects, of you know, an entire upgrade system, which just couldn't easily be retrofitted on top of the first one. So that was one of the main motivators for making a sequel instead of just keeping updating the, the first game. Well, I guess coincidentally, um, weapons or firearms are an interest of mine. And um, that's something that I've maintained and uh, taken an active interest in injecting authenticity into all of our, ga our games that are feature firearms, weapons, guns. I think it, it greatly helps having somebody on the team who, who does have that personal interest in it. Uh, we also do have to keep in mind like what the player's perception of a weapon will do. For example, like exactly how wide a shotgun will hit, for example, it tends to vary greatly in video games from what it does in real life and so to some extent we do have to keep in mind like the player's expectations of what something will do versus its real life equivalent. I think from a game design perspective zombies are like the ideal enemy in a way. They're predictable, they're not too intelligent, there's an infinite supply of them, there's no real moral concerns about taking down as many as you can with you. Um, but they're also surprisingly broad. Like, they can be everything from jump scares to cannon fodder to existential dread, you know, depending on what the game calls for. Uh, my favourite part about the game development process is I love the, the sort of ideation or coming out with ideas, um, particularly around stories, you know, collaborating with colleagues. You know, as, as we develop these games and this franchise, we don't necessarily know everything that's going to happen in terms of story, what, what's going to happen to characters. So for me, there's a process of discovery and helping to, for my, you know, for my small part, shape the world in the direction and I find that really satisfying. My favourite part of the, the game development process is the first time you see something that used to exist purely in your imagination, you know, come to life. So, you know, one of the most satisfying experiences we have here is we bring in people from outside the studio to test the game and new features going in. And when they get to the end of their session and they seem disappointed that they had to put it down and let somebody else try, that, that's always an incredibly satisfying feeling. As someone who has worked across all of those 10 years, um, yeah, it's always been an interesting project to work on and game to work on and still have as much passion about working on it 
and the franchise in general as I did back then, maybe even more so. I think I'm, I'm constantly amazed by the, the enduring power of the Into the Dead franchise. I think even if we didn't know like the potential legacy of the, the franchise, you know, we knew from the very early prototypes that there was something fun there that we could definitely build a game around. And 10 years later, we're still getting thousands of downloads a day of it. So we were, we were committed to bringing that to life and putting it out in the market, even if it wasn't going to be something that lasted for a decade. To celebrate the past, we've created a brand new game mode in Into the Dead 2, the classic run based on the original title. If you haven't seen the trailer, let's roll that now. The classic run is now available to play, so make sure you hop in and give that a go. We are going to need a new leader for the leaderboards. That could be you. Just saying. Anyway, survivors, that's all from us today. Make sure you join us next week as we celebrate the present of the franchise. But in the meantime, enjoy Into the Dead, enjoy the classic run, relive some of that nostalgia, and make sure you keep an eye on our Facebook page for updates. Brogan and Jason, sing us on. Just because I just be